ATS Inspect is software that replaces the paper forms and tick sheets that you're probably currently using in your foundry to record quality related data. The software you see here is the operator interface that your inspector would see when they're using the software. The software can run on either a fixed station PC, a tablet, a laptop, or other device. Once your inspector has called up the part that they're going to be inspecting, you can see here that they're presented with a live digital twin, which is a CAD image of that part. I can orient the part in free space. I can zoom in or out to specifically locate a nonconformance, or I can reorient the part using these thumbnails that you see over on the right hand side. If I do see a defect on the part, I simply touch or click on the location on the graphic and that location is captured. I'm then presented with a list of defects that I can pick from to note the specific type of defect that I see at that location. In addition to the type of defect, I can add information that may be helpful for me later when I'm looking at the reports that the software produces. For example, I can note things like a rank, major, scrap part, minor, etc. So here I'm going to say it's a major defect. After that, you can also put in information like assigning a responsible cell and area. I can add a comment in free form text. If you look at this little notation here, which is looks like a photograph, this also enables me to access the camera that's in the tablet or laptop or workstation, and I can take an actual digital photo of the defect and attach that to the record as well. When I'm done noting the defect, I can go back to the main screen, and you can see here that we put a flag noting the specific defect type with a lead line leading to the location on the part where that defect has occurred. I can continue with this process, as I am now, by selecting other locations and defect types, and then those will also be noted on the part. A few other advantages the software has is you can see over here that I have links to job aids or work instructions, quality alerts, examples of actual defects. These are types of media and documents that your inspector can note at any time to help them make the right decision or entry. If you have standards documents, for example, uh, you can display that during the data collection process for your inspector to use as a reference. So that's a free form entry of defects against my part. You'll also see I have a checklist tab here. The checklist interface allows me to be led through a series of specific items that I'm supposed to verify or check. The checklist question responses can be yes, no, as you see here. They can be measurements or they can be, a, uh, they can be a multiple choice as well. So here it's saying, is the ID stamp legible? I look at the part. If it is legible, I say yes, and I move on to the next check. Is scale present in the hole? I say no. That would actually be, be bad if scale was present in the hole. And now I'm led on to a series of measurements. You'll also note I can have a work instruction or job aid automatically come up. I can click on that and enlarge that job aid if I need more detail. But here, for example, I'm going to take the measurement. I'm going to type it in. But if you're using a gauge with a digital output, you can simply interface that to your workstation or tablet or laptop and take the readings automatically. The software knows if your spec limits uh, have been violated or not. So for example, here I put in a reading of 90. That's within the spec limit. It verifies that and you can see the green check saying that that is a verified in spec entry and it moves on to the next measurement. Here, unfortunately, I'm going to take a measurement and that is out of spec. The software lets me know that's a non-conforming uh, dimension I've just taken. And now it logs that in as a non-conformance on the part and you can see the red X. And lastly, I'm noting a uh, material heat here, which I do just selecting from the pick from list. All right, that's a quick overview of the data collection. And now we'll move on to reporting. Once your data has been collected in Inspect, that data is immediately available as it has been deposited in an MS SQL database. There's a web-based reporting module called Advanced Reporting Services. There are over 80 out-of-the-box reports that are included with the reporting software. You can see a list of those appearing on the left side of the screen. If your units are serialized, each unit will have a complete digital record of all of the information associated with the inspections that have taken place for that part. Here, for example, I've put in serial number 55685, 
when I click on the run button, the software goes into the database and it retrieves all of the data that's associated with that serialized part. Here you can see some header information, any additional fields or information I've entered. It has time and date stamped each inspection point and each inspection that has taken place. It shows how much time in elapsed minutes that it took to do that inspection. It shows my shift, who the user is, what station it was taken at, and whether or not any defects were recorded during that inspection or repairs if I'm repairing my part. I get an image of the part that shows any defects that were seen during the inspection process. You can see here there are two defects. One is green indicating it's been repaired. The other is red indicating it is still unrepaired. This section here gives more detail on each one of those defects. And as you'll recall, during data collection, I entered in some checklist type inspection items, and those all appear here. They're all time and date stamped. The user is recorded, and you can also see that the status indicates whether or not it was a conforming or non-conforming answer. So each part that has been inspected has an individual record in the database. But then the software is able to go in and mine that data and produce what I would call aggregate reports. For example, uh, let's say you'd like to see what your defects were over a certain period of time, regardless of part. Here I've picked the concern ranking report off on the left-hand side. I've picked a time and date range. And now when I run the report, I see a Pareto chart telling me that porosity was my largest defect uh, over that period of time. Most of these reports have drill downs. So what's nice here is once I see porosity is my biggest issue, I can simply click on that bar and now the software will drill down in a dashboard uh, type format and show me that the knuckle is the part that had the most porosity. So if I'm trying to eliminate or reduce the porosity I see on my shop floor, I know I'm not going to start with the water cap. I'm going to focus on the knuckle to get the biggest bang for my buck. So that's just one type of report, there are many others. Uh, the nice thing about the software is it has these 80 out of the box reports. I can pick any one of them. For example, here, if I pick a report that is a defect by hour and concern, the software will automatically go in and organize that data and show me a chart that tells me which defects are occurring in which hour. Here you can see, for example, my biggest problematic uh, hour from a porosity standpoint is hour two of my shift. You can export this data to Excel. There's a lot of other reports, including the ability to map my defects. One of the most powerful aspects of the software's reporting capabilities is the ability to look at defect maps. The software can take multiple inspection records, overlay those images and noted defects to produce defect maps. These will be very helpful for your process and quality engineers in order to see not only what types of defects are occurring, but where they're occurring, which would drive tooling and other process changes. I can orient the part in free space, as I did there, or I can click on the thumbnails to orient the part to see the view that I would like to look at. You'll see over here on the right, we have a listing of the various defects that are in the database. Here I have a check on porosity. You may recall when we looked at the Pareto chart that my biggest defect and part combination was porosity on the knuckle. So I can then retrieve a defect map which shows me exactly where that porosity is occurring. I can map one type of defect, or as you can see I'm doing here, I can add multiple defects of my choosing and it will add a different icon for each defect to make it very noticeable as to what defects are occurring where. So we can map defects on an individual basis here with a scatter report, or we have another report that should look familiar to you uh, called a concern spectrum. Here I've laid a 15 by 15 grid over my part. So what the software does is for the defect types I have selected, it will put a circle in each one of these cells, and in that circle, it lists the actual number of defects associated with what has occurred on that location or cell of the grid I've laid over the part. The circles are color coded based on the percentage of overall defects that are represented by the presence of those defects in a certain cell. I can also make the cell more or less granular. So for example, here I'm now reducing the amount of cells, so I'm looking at a 10 by 10 grid, and you can also see the numbers have changed because the cells are larger. 
So these types of grids are usually very helpful to any foundry and leads to process improvements, which will reduce your cost of quality. Thank you.